A uniform disk of mass m in radius r is projected horizontally with velocity v0 on a rough horizontal floor so that it starts off with purely sliding motion at t is equal to 0. After t0 seconds, it acquires a purely rolling motion as shown in the figure. Calculate the velocity of the center of mass at the disk of the disk at t is equal to 0. Assuming the coefficient of friction to be mu, calculate t0. Also calculate the work done by the frictional force as a function of time and the total work done by it over a time t much longer than t0. Alright. So initially time was 0 and it had a velocity v0. Okay. And it slid. Right. And because of the sliding, its velocity would have come down. And then it started rolling and it is a pure rolling and that pure rolling started at t is equal to t0. Alright. So before the time was t0, that is between 0 to t0, forward sliding is happening. So the friction must be leftwards, right, this way, and it must be maximum because it is already in sliding motion. So kinetic friction must be there. And uh, the only force acting here is the frictional force. So there should be a retardation, right, because uh, velocity is in uh, this direction and acceleration and the force is in that direction, right. So that uh, retardation or negative acceleration, whatever you want to call it, A is equal to F by M. F will be equal to mu times n and n here is mg right and here will be mg this is n this is mg so mu mg by m which is equal to mu g so the retardation is equal to mu g and this frictional force will also create a torque right that torque uh, is will be equal to i alpha or alpha will be equal to torque by i right i is the moment of inertia now because it is a disc its moment of inertia is half mr square and torque will be the friction force times r the friction force which is acting in that direction times this r right so that becomes 2 mu g by r right this is the alpha value this is the a value now let's say at t is equal to t naught the linear velocity is v and the angular velocity becomes omega right so in that case v will be equal to v naught minus a times t naught so i'm using the equations of motion because the acceleration or the retardation is a constant right i can do that so that becomes v naught minus mu g times t naught see that minus sign is because the acceleration is opposite to the direction of velocity. So it will decrease it. So V0 minus mu g times of T0 will give you the velocity at T is equal to T0. And omega will be equal to alpha times T0. So that will be 2 times of mu g divided by R times T0. Right? So this is the value of omega and V. Omega is uh, angular acceleration times T0. Right? Because initially angular velocity was 0. So basically omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t0. So omega0 is 0, so this becomes directly equal to alpha t0. That's what I've done. Now for pure rolling, v must be equal to r omega, right? We just found out v at t0 is equal to uh, v0 minus mu g times of t0 here, right? And uh, value of uh, r is r and omega is 2 mu g by r times t0. We just found out the value of omega also, right? So we just multiply them and we get the value of t0 to be equal to v0 by 3 times mu g. So this is the time t0 at which the pure rolling starts all right and uh, if you want to find the the velocity v then you can just plug in the value of t0 in this uh, formula you get v0 minus mu g times the value of t0 here you get v equals to 2 by 3 times of v0 so this is the velocity at time t is equal to t0 all right now let's talk about the work done by friction so when the time is less than t0 right let, let's take some time t which is lesser than t0 what happens the work done by the friction would be the change in the mechanical energy, right? Because the friction is the only dissipative force which is present there. So that will be the kinetic energy at t is equal to t naught minus the kinetic energy at t is equal to zero. So at t is equal to t naught, the kinetic energy will be half mv square, the linear kinetic energy, plus half i omega square, the rotational kinetic energy, minus the kinetic energy at t is equal to zero, which is half m v naught square, because at t is equal to zero, it just had a linear velocity v naught. Okay. Now we know the value of v. And uh, we know the value of omega and we know the value of i. So half times m times in place of v, I'm plugging in uh, v0 minus mu g times t0, the whole square, plus half i is half mr square. That's the i of that uh, disk times omega, which is 2 mu g t0 by r, right? Whole square of the square of that omega square minus half m v0 square, which is this term, right? So if I take out m mu g t and 2 common, this whole term common, you get 3 mu g t, 3 mu g t naught minus 2 times of v naught. And uh, that becomes equals to minus m v naught square by 6. You could have placed the value of t naught before itself. You could have used the value of v directly as the value which we found, which was equal to 2 by 3 v naught, right? You could have used that value, but 
that's fine. I mean, you could plug it in later or whatever you want to do. So basically the answer is minus mv0 square by 6. This is the work done, right? Uh, till the time e becomes equal to t0, right? Till this time, this is the work done. And uh, in place of this uh, t0, if you just use the use simply t, then you'd find you get the expression as well. But what happens after time t0 is that a pure rolling starts, right? When pure rolling starts, then there is no relative motion between the, the bottom most point and the surface because of which there will be no work done by the friction. So only work is done till the thing was sliding and which is equal to the value which we have just found. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.